hope you're well welcome back to the barn so in the last video we made the frames for the six panel doors for the wardrobe up in my guest bedroom and in this video we're going to continue to size the panels router the panels into their groove and then actually build the doors up so in essence we'll have a finished door by the end of this video okay so now i've got some other panels from the bedroom so i need to cut these so they are to the correct size and then we can router them now there's a few things i need to do just to do that first of all some of these panels have got a bit of glue squeeze out so i'm going to use my double handled scraper and just get rid of the glue squeeze out any rough parts and that's just because when i'm then passing them over the saw or indeed the router later i know that they're going to be sat flat down to the bed so it only takes a couple of minutes per panel just to go through with this great little tool this i've had this since i was an apprentice and then i need to straighten the panels now some of them aren't totally straight up one side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a straight edge on with the track saw so i know i've got one squared edge to reference from and then i'm going to pass them over the table saw to cut the parallel edge and then i'm going to use the track saw with my bench dog square and square off the edges now first of all i need to establish how big i need my panel when i made these they're made slightly over size so i need to cut them down to be the right size to work out how big they need to be the inside measurement of the groove is basically the ends of the tenons on the styles i said earlier i need to allow a couple of millimeters just for a bit of movement of the panel inside the groove so basically measuring across these two points we have got 412 millimeters so if i make my right on the board just as a aid memoir so if i make my panels 408 millimeters wide and then my doors are 960 millimeters long so if I lay the two styles back to back, measure 900, find 960 millimetres on my tape measure, and then measure the width of the two tenons, that tells me that the two that my panel then needs to be 960 minus the width of the two tenons. So it actually needs to be 868 millimetres. So again, I'm going to allow about four mil. So I'm going to make them 864. So I'm going to cut my panels all to that size. While I do that, I'm going to put some tunes on. Nine five two. Nine five two. Ooh. -hoo. The panels done. Tomorrow I'm going to route to the moulding zone, which potentially makes a right mess. See you in the morning. It's now time to start moulding this panel. Now, now in the last video I said there was a fourth stage of routing, and I just want to explain what i'm going to do here because it's it's important so i'm going to use my little board hopefully you can see that at the moment our style looks a bit like that and i need to router the edge of the panel that's the edge of the panel this cutter is going to router the edge of the panel like that now on this step you've got two choices you can either route your panel and go deeper and deeper and deeper until that dimension there fits in there but that means that your panel steps out from the face of your 
style and rails. And I quite like that. It means you get a really deep, nice, crisp edged panel. Now I can't do this because I've got these grooves in the back of the panel like that. So what I'm going to have to do, sit my panel in the, in the zone of the style, which is probably the right thing to do anyway. Machine my panel so it fits in there. And then I'm going to have to create a rebate in the back with a different cutter which is not in the set, it's just a standard straight router cutter. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to router that until my shoulder, if you like, of my panel starts to fit in the groove. And then I'm going to put the straight router bit in and just put a little quirk rebate around the back so it all sits in nice and flush. Right, let's get Big Bertha in. So I'm going to put the cutter in. I'm not going to put an insert plate in. The biggest one that comes with your Craig is that one and the cutter won't go through it. So we'll just put it in like that and tighten it up and make sure it's properly tightened because it's a big chunk of steel to come out and then drop that out so it's pretty much under the face. That rotates nice in there, it's not going to catch on. Now I can put the fence back on just to line it. And this bearing with the face of my fence like that and then clamp the fence in place. Close this fence up on there. There's enough room there for some adequate dust extraction because this does create a lot of mess. So we now set up that router cutter is there. That's probably our starter position. So first of all, I need to run my panel through that way across the grain. And then this way, with the grain and that's because as I go through here even though I'm only taking a sliver off it's going to break out the edges of the panel by running it that way and then that way it means that any tear out on the cross grain will be taken away by the cut on the long grain. Take it really steady round about a millimetre at a time which probably means I'm going to put each panel through about five six seven times probably talking what a hundred cuts it takes a while and it's noisy. I'm going to put my air defenders on. Now the other thing that I haven't mentioned, I just need to, because of the size of the router cutter, I just need to crank down the running speed of the router. So I'm just going to reduce it down so it's not running at full speed. So I'll put my headphones on, do the first one, the other five are in the house. I'll just have to go and get them. But I'll run this first one around, I'll stop the router and then show you kind of what it looks like after one cut. And then I'm just going to carry on. Okay, so that's it after one pass. Good thing about doing this is they're not really running a great risk of messing it up because the weight of the panel is trying to do that and not that. So the worst case scenario is that you're actually going to just miss a small chunk and you'll have to redo it rather than taking too much out. What I might do though, just put my feather board on, just give me a little bit more. given it three passes and that's taken about quarter of an hour I think and it's eight o'clock now so I'm going to knock it off just because I don't want to annoy the neighbours. So after three passes looking okay cutting really nice and neat there's no chatter there's no tear out so I'm happy with that. I'm guessing a millimetre time I've got six millimetres. Right I'm going to call it here for tonight I shall see you in the morning. Morning. Half panels will travel. Right let's carry on where we left off last night. It's a beautiful day this morning and for the first time in months 
I've got the window open. Get a bit of air flowing through. Also let the neighbours listen to the router to full effect. So we need to crank up another millimetre. <laughs> Right, well, that's done, thankfully. There's good news and there's bad news. The good news is they've machined absolutely perfectly. They're really nice and smooth. And I think in the sanding process will be really easy. But I've made a real schoolboy error and I've never even dawned on me until that last two router cuts. So because my panels aren't quite wide enough to use three of them parquet floors, I had to put a piece on the end. And all my dominoes have come through. So I've got a nice little feature of a routed edge domino. So the model of the story is, if you've got to glue boards together to make wide panels and then do that with them, you need to make sure that your glue line is not in the line of your router or else you'll do that. It never even occurred to me. How daft's that? Now I'm really fortunate these are going to be painted so I can fill them quite easily and no one will ever know. Apart from you guys, but you won't tell anybody, will you? But it's annoying that I've just made myself a little bit of additional work. I've just got to mix a bit of two-part filler, fill them holes and sand them off. But if they'd have been hardwood or been varnished or stained, polished, I'd have been in trouble. Especially imagine if I'd have made 30 kitchen doors and they'd have been like that. So yeah, if you're making these guys, don't glue up within the zone of your outer cutter because you're going to be in Barney like I am. Right, I'm going to go and have my breakfast now and then come back and just put that little quirk on the back of the panel. I need to remove about, I say about four mil on a little quirk all the way around by 10 mil deep and then they'll just fit nicely in. I'll do that later today. I've just got to go and run a errand. Okay, this is the cutter I'm going to rebate with. So this is the final router pass. I've just put my little rebate cutter in. Turn my router back up. What I had it set on for the big cutter. And I'm only just now going to put enough rebate in to let the panel sit in this groove. So basically that dimension there is five millimeters. So I just need to wind that up. Okay, so the same applies. I'm gonna run across, then I'm gonna run round. Oh, thank goodness for that. Routering is complete. It's always a mega job routering doors like that. Imagine if I were doing a full kitchen and there were 30 of them. I'd be here for days. So the routing's done. The next job is a load of sanding and I'm not going to make you watch that. But what I do need to do is fill these holes. 
Again, really disappointed that this has happened. Schoolboy mistake on my behalf. Feel free to send me a load of comments and tell me how rubbish I am. It'll make this video go viral, if nothing else. So that'll at least make me feel a little bit better. It's important to share these things with you. And I'm sure I could edit this film and look like I've made no mistakes. Firstly, it's important to actually share my mistakes with you guys because I do make them and we all make mistakes. But also what is really important is that by sharing this mistake with you, hopefully if you're making these panels, you won't make the same mistake. It's really annoying, but for me, it doesn't really matter because these are painted and I can fill them. But for you, the viewer, hopefully it means that you don't make the same mistake as I did. Already put three doors together. This is the fourth one. I've sanded the panel, filled my faux pas, sanded the inside faces of the frame. Just putting a little mark on here so I know where my panel's going to sit. Ideally, when you put these panels together, you should just glue the frame together and leave the panel loose in the middle. So that allows for contraction or expansion for moisture. Specifically, I left these panels inside the room in which they're going to be used for so long is so they are to the atmosphere so there isn't very much expansion contraction going to happen and that's because i'm going to put a couple of dots of glue down this style and glue this style to the panel this is going to be the hanging style because these doors are heavy and i just don't trust over months or years of use that the glue there between the panel and the style is going to keep this door together so i'm going to glue the panel into this groove so basically the hanging style of the panel is one and then glue the rest of the door together which means that the panel if it does expand contract it actually can still do so within the other three styles and keep this one locked. I think that's the best way of doing it to make sure that the door is stable over its lifetime and not just relying on the glue on them little joints. I'm going to put a bit of glue, I don't have to put a lot in every little bit else. I'll just put a little bit on the back and then just put the panel in its groove like so line it up with the pencil marks i've made and then brush my glue into the joint just making sure get as much glue in that joint as i can put my style in do the same with the other one pull that rail in place Sure, it's flush with the edge, and then just enough glue, and then just plonk this rail in like that. That's my door together. Clamps on the bench. Put my door in the clamps. Slide about, and then make sure all my styles and rails are equal and then measure across the diagonals and that's 75 which tells me it's miles out of square that's 85 that's a long one ok 
Okay, that looks like a square. So. Measure about 1082 across, that's 1080. So it must be about 1084 then. Now the big one. There's a reason why woodworkers don't do a lot of gluing up live on cameras because as soon as you fit the camera on and start introducing glue, everything seems to go wrong. Just use these little ways, just make sure that the, the styles and the rails are actually flush at the ends. That one's fine, that one's fine, that one's fine. Right, just before I put the final pressure on, that's 83. And that is 83. Slight probably tap on this end. Looking for 82. There we go, 82. 82, perfect. Now, give that some clamping. There we go. That's door number four, cloth and just wipe them joints off. Right, four down, two to go. Wow. Hi guys, well, I'm feeling a bit bedraggled and a bit dirty. I've been mixing concrete all afternoon, so... I've just come back in here to glue another door up. I've done four, so two more to do. I'm going to do one tonight, I'll do the other one tomorrow, and then they're all together. Okay, so we've got our last one, eventually. Feels like I've been treading through treacle making these. So now what I've got to do is let this dry. I'm going to bring all the other five back out, sand the face frame, which are nice. So it shouldn't take too much sanding. Front backs, all four sides. Just go around and just make sure there isn't anything that just needs touching up. So when I glued these up over Christmas, and I'm going to use COVID as an excuse. I was really ill with COVID while I was doing these over Christmas. No. Can't really use that as an excuse. But when I glued these up, I assumed, I think at first, when I glued the first three panels up, that the panels would be wide enough. Subsequently found they weren't wide enough, so I added a bit of offcut. The frame came out the same piece of parquet floor. Basically, one of the offcuts that was left was big enough, so I just glued that on. What I should have done was add my joints sort of there, there, and there which would have given me a much wider band around the corner to the machine. So that, that's the mistake I made. If I was selling these, if these were for a customer, I couldn't sell them with them filler holes in. If I had to rescue this, I think what I would do is I would cut another piece of wood. I would rip this off about there, glue a new piece on, and then I'd just have to reroute to that end on. That's how I'd rescue the project if I had to. Well, there we are, six doors. It's taken a long time to make these. Started at the end of December. So I'm really glad they're finished. So now I just need to fit the hinges and hang them in the wardrobes and then they're ready for the decorator. In other words, Lynn. But hanging them's for the next video. I'll see you soon. Bye.